Good Welcome to St. Andrews. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, I think one of the most important ones is that we're welcoming new members this morning. And between the first service and this service, we have welcomed 10 new members to St. Andrews today. They are all wearing a, a red flower, so if you see someone, please welcome them. And uh, we'll introduce the people a little later on in the service to you. Um, I want to remind you of about every Sunday coming up is something special. So um, today is Pentecost, and next week Ed is away, and Tina will be taking the service. And then on the 19th, it is our communion service, and we are going to welcome three new elders. And then our final service on uh, June 26th, we are going to celebrate St. Andrew's 97th anniversary, and we're going to have a baptism. And that's just wonderful news for St. Andrew's. Um, a pantry update. Like you see in the uh, bulletin, Old Mother Hubbard's cupboard is a little bare. So we could definitely use anything that you can. Um, Nancy is recommending some cereal or milk, um, but anything will be uh, wonderfully accepted. Last month they gave out 90 bags, so it's definitely serving a purpose and it's a continuing ministry um, and it's only getting larger, and so it shows that we have a real need for this in Own Sound. Um, Vacation Bible School is coming up, and as Lori has said, we have enough volunteers, although we'll always take more. Um, but what we need now is children. So if you know of anyone, um, please sign them up. It's $20 per child, and they can be up to grade 6, any school age. Um, on Saturday, June 11th, uh, Shoreline Chorus is going to present um, a concert. It will be for the Food Grains Bank and um, all donations. It, the, it is, the mission is by donation only and uh, everything will go to the Big Head River uh, Food Grains Bank. And one thing I would like to put a plug in for is I was on the Insta Church directory the other day, and boy, people, we need some pictures. So if you haven't submitted your picture yet, or you don't know how, please call the office, and we can get you hooked up and arranged for that. Um, it's, it's become a wonderful tool. It's great to have um, to, for sending cards and that. There's addresses and that, but when you get old like me, sometimes you need to know who people are, and the only way I know is through a picture. So that was just something I noticed that I would like to say. Anyway, we welcome everyone who's worshiping with us online, and uh, well, thank you very much. getting my microphone on. Welcome everyone to worship today. Good to see you all as we come to worship God. And it's such a privilege and it's a celebration today. What's the occasion? We just heard it. 
Pentecost, and it's the birthday of the church. And we'll talk more about that, of course, when we get into uh, our worship service. God bless you as we worship together. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, as Mary Louise said, a special welcome to those who are online. And I'd just like at this time to read our land acknowledgement. We want to acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabek Nation, the people of the three fires known as Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations, and further give thanks to the Chippewas of Saugeen and the Chippewas of Nawash, known collectively as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as the traditional keepers of the land. At this time, shall we respond with the call to worship, and I will lead and you respond. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Praise and glory to you, Spirit of God, our comfort and strength. Let us sing praises to God as long as we live. Praise and glory to you, Spirit of God, our comfort and strength. May our worship be pleasing to God, ever three and ever one. Let us praise the Lord. Amen. And shall we respond and sing together number 277 on this assembled host? Shall we stand? join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, from our scattered lives we gather to praise you, for you are great and wonderful. With joyful hearts we celebrate the work of your spirit. At the dawn of creation, you sent your spirit to life. Over the centuries, your spirit called your servants to proclaim your love and justice. Through the flames of Pentecost, your spirit gave birth to the church with energy and wonder. Today, your spirit is at work in the world, bringing renewal and hope here and everywhere. Transform us by your spirit to become more faithful followers of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, 
we confess we often resist the Spirit's guidance. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. You poured out your spirit to guide your disciples and empower your church with gifts for ministry. The challenge to change makes us uncomfortable. We overlook the gifts others can offer and fail to live out Christ's love for the world. Forgive us, O God. Send your Holy Spirit to us again and open our minds and hearts to the challenges of ministry you set before us. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear and believe the promise of the good news. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old life has passed away and the new life has begun. Know that in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You are set free to live a life anew in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. So can the new members please come forward? And please just line up in front of the communion table because we want people at home to also see you. <laughs> this is a great time of celebration. Of course, um, Pentecost is the birthday of the church, but it is so appropriate that four out of our 10 who are a new membership class are here in this service, six in the first service, that you're here just to say, this is wonderful. I want to be part of this church, and this church operates through the work of the Holy Spirit to be propelled forward for ministry. And you want to be part of it. You want to be part of the congregation of St. Andrews because you believe the Spirit is working here. So you'll be part of the body of Christ. And uh, we just thank God for this time. So Carol Makowski is, um, she moved to Owen Sound last year, right, Carol? And Carol is a transfer from another Presbyterian church. Donna Brown has been here for quite a while. And Donna became actually officially a member last year, but did not have the opportunity to go through a class and join the class as we ask people to come to the class if they like to join or if they would like a refresher or for whatever reason. So Dawn is here and uh, she's also going to be part of the ceremony because she went through the whole class with the rest of the group. And we're pleased that you did that, Donna. Awesome. So Michelle Ireton is uh, no stranger to a lot of you. Michelle uh, was raised in the church and um, has indicated her desire that she wants to be a professing member of the church. And uh, we're going to um, have Sonny baptized in a couple of weeks. And that's a beautiful thing. And then Stephanie McCartney, who is also um, grew up in the church. And these two are sisters, if you're not uh, aware of that. And uh, indicated your desire as well to become a full professing member of the congregation of St. Andrews. And uh, we are blessed that you have all decided to do this, and you're going to answer the questions in a few moments, but for starters, I just want to give a little background of baptism and why we are here. Christian friends, Carol, Donna, Michelle, and Stephanie, have been baptized and are members of the body of Christ. They have been nurtured within the Christian community and instructed in the belief and the practice of the church. 
and making public profession of their faith, they desire to affirm their baptism and to acclaim the rights and responsibilities associated with membership in the congregation of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Owen Sound. Remember your baptism, which is all about God's grace, unconditional love to us. Remember that and give thanks. By the waters of baptism and the powers of the Holy Spirit, God claims us and calls each one by name. We're not just um, one of nine or seven billion, rather. God knows us, and we know that through the Bible. God knows us by name. God unites us to Christ in his death and resurrection and grafts us into the body of Christ as members of the church. God washes us clean by forgiving our sins, commissions us to be a royal priesthood with Christ in Christ's ministry to the world. He empowers us to live in newness of life as people of the word and invites us to be renewed at the Lord's table until one day we will feast with God in glory. By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, and that's taken from Ephesians 2, verse 8. Carol, Donna, Michelle, and Stephanie, you stand before God and this company of God's people to affirm the covenant God made with you at your baptism and to acknowledge your growth in grace, in understanding your faith, and to assume responsibility as a disciple of Jesus Christ in this congregation and to the world. And please answer the following questions with, question with, I am ready. And you can do it in one voice. Are you ready to make public profession of faith? I am ready. Awesome. So please answer individually each of the following questions with I do, God helping me. And we'll start with Carol. First, do you accept God as your Father, Jesus Christ as your Savior, and the Holy Spirit as your guide and counselor? What is your answer? I do, God helping me. 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 Very good. Number two, do you want to walk in God's ways and in so doing, advance the kingdom of God on earth? What is your answer? I do, God helping me. 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 Wonderful. And then the third, final question. Do you desire to seek the peace and the well-being of the church of Jesus Christ? What is your answer? I do, God helping me. 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 Wonderful. Shall we all stand and profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed? And we will see it there on the screens. And shall we say... Yeah, so it's a little on the little side, but uh, a, lot, a lot of us know it by heart as well, so we'll have to use that power in addition. Yeah, maybe a little closer if you want. Okay. <laughs> Shall we say in one voice, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, before you're seated, I'd like to invite all those who are ordained elders, whether serving or not, um, on session, um, 
elders of Presbyterian Church or other churches, you're welcome, as well as ministers, Presbyterian ministers and ministers from other denominations, you are welcome to come forward and give what we call the right hand of fellowship, but uh, COVID style, it'll be the right elbow or left elbow, whatever you feel, of fellowship, okay? So please come forward, all you elders, and um, everyone else may be seated. Yeah. And you guys just want to move a little bit closer this way again? And uh, Mary Lu Louise and I will be last. We will give out uh, the certificates and a gift of the Bible. Boy, that's quite a group, eh? <laughs> well, Well, yes. congratulations. Thank you this is wonderful. <laughs> and uh, here is a message for you from the congregation. For you as well. Yeah. <laughs> and congratulations. <laughs> this is so great. Yeah. God, congratulations. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. You're welcome. And congratulations, Stephanie. And God bless you. You're welcome. So, congregation, the, these um, certificates, of course, for new membership, as well as the Bibles, which are Eugene Peterson's The Message, which is a paraphrase of the Bible, but it's such a um, helpful addition to our other, our other Bibles and so on, and it helps us in our study, and it's more contemporary language that is helpful for us to um, understand the Scriptures kind of in a bigger way. So, Eugene Peterson's uh, work has been presented um, as a gift to each one of these new elders. Um, just want to have a word of prayer as we give thanks. Dear God, thank you for these new elders. And um, Lord, work your spirit in them to help them fulfill the vows they have just made. Lord, this is a celebration 
as your body of Christ is growing and is going deeper into your will. Thank you for this church, for these new members, their families, Lord. Um, give them what they need at this time, and we give you thanks. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So as the new members are finding their place, I'd like to ask the children to come forward. Have a seat. Yeah. That's okay. We're not in a big hurry. <laughs> we don't mind. It takes time sometimes to get organized. So, yeah. Come, come on, Sonny. Yeah. <laughs> well, very good. And Maeve, Sonny and Maeve are here. And um, in a couple of weeks, or three weeks, they um, will be baptized. So, that is so wonderful to see them here. <laughs> He's been watching me, I think. Eh? <laughs> oh, this is so fun. So these guys are um, actually all cousins. So they know each other. And I just want to ask you guys, what do you know about Pentecost? Okay, and, and that's okay. There's, it's the, the day when you hear Pentecost, you think this is a birthday. You think of a bird. Okay, and that's something to think about because Pentecost is about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus was baptized, a dove came down. So when you think of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit, a dove is an image. So that's, you're, you weren't far off. That's, that's really good. So at Pentecost, people were in a room together and they were praying. And then they heard the rush of a mighty wind come. And then fire came and rested on the heads of all the people, little flames. And this happened 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, okay? And it was the Feast of Pentecost, which was in their calendar, a time that they remember to give thanks for the harvest. And the, and the Jewish people also remembered when God gave the Ten Commandments and the law to the people after they left Egypt. So Pentecost means kind of 50, okay? Penta, it's from the Greek word, Penta kind of means 50 days after Jesus, after Jesus actually died and rose from the dead, from his resurrection. So we're celebrating today that the Holy Spirit came out because we have God the Father, we have God the, God the Spirit, and we have Jesus who's God, God the Son, right? That's right, our Savior. So today we celebrate that Jesus went to heaven, but then the Holy Spirit came and to be God with us. The Spirit, we don't see it, but it is present all around us. It's, it's present in Sonny, yeah? In Maeve. It's present uh, in uh, Agnes. And it's present in Ellie. And it's present in each one of us. And we're going to talk about that, how important that is, the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes we take it for granted and we just get busy with life, eh? So this... That's right. So we're going to celebrate um, today. And you guys, you know, you can celebrate at home later and read that part of the Holy Spirit from Acts 2. It would be good for you guys to listen to it. 
the Holy Spirit came down like the rush of a mighty wind and fire, because fire shows the strength and the power of God too. Let's pray. Let's all pray together. Dear God, Dear God. we thank you for this day. We thank you for our new members. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Lord, let us not forget that your Spirit is with us all the time. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys can go to your classes. Yeah, bye. <laughs> oh, see you, Sonny. <laughs> bye, guys. Today's scripture reading, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and Peter addressing the crowd. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each other. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, Libya belong, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in their own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, see, shall, shall dream dreams. Even upon slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. <coughs> and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord.
beautiful straight from the scriptures. I love that piece. Thank you, choir. Shall we come to our Lord in prayer? Dear God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts together, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today, it's a day to celebrate. It is Pentecost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is important that we remember it because sometimes we so easily forget to celebrate the great gift from God. So we have a trinity, right? We have God present in creation. We have God present in Jesus. And we have God present everywhere right now through the Holy Spirit each day. And really important that the Holy Spirit becomes more reminded in our minds, and we need to do that for each other. The Spirit is with you. God, go with you with His Spirit, we say to each other. So today, we look at that that wonderful story, and we just read about this mighty wind. Now, there's been some mighty winds uh, in the weather, as we know that derecho, is that what they call it? That happened in, um, not in our area, but uh, below Stratford and uh, towards Ottawa and uh, southwestern Ontario. A mighty wind, which has a lot of force, caused some damage. So they would have heard this wind, and that would have caught their attention. And then they saw tongues of fire coming down and resting on each of them. And we think it kind of on top of each other's head. And I think that this shows us that God is just not this impersonal God way up there that create universe, but God came through his spirit and rested on each one that they could hear it in their own language. There are people from different cultures and different languages, and they could hear the gospel, the good news, in their own language. And that was a one-time event of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they heard the good news, and they were so excited. All these people with different languages and the apostles, and they just sprung forward to build the church. The church was born. And we are called as Christians, you know, we have to keep the church strong and we need to go out and spread the good news to others. And sometimes we look at it maybe like, oh, there's another thing we got to do. Whereas the Holy Spirit was empowering them and it was a spontaneity that occurred. This news is too good to keep to myself. We need to share the good news, to build Christ's body, to build the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, God is the great creator, but he created the universe, and we are children of the universe, and some people will say that. Of course, we are part of God's creation, but even more so, he knows us. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He's a personal God. And we can count on that. And it's real. But we so easily get distracted, don't we? And it was neat that they were praying as the Spirit came down because the prayer was already uniting them, right? And they were open for the gateway. It was kind of the door was opening. It was in line with God. And they were able, because they were praying together, they were better able to receive the Spirit. So here is a picture I found, and it's Jesus who called himself the Almighty. He called himself God, but also called himself our friend. 
okay? If you love me, Jesus says, and this is in keeping with what we heard in the anthem, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, somebody who is with you, to help you, to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you as well. So this is a gift to each one of us. And are we accepting it? You know, this beautiful gift of God's presence. And I just want to show you a little video and it's from when our house arrived. If some of you are not aware, but Jackie and I are having a house built right now, and it's a modular home, a quality home built uh, in the factory and then delivered in halves on trucks. So this is what happened on delivery day on May the 16th. One of the modules made it up the hill, but the other one didn't. Okay? So, so the neighbor said, I'll give you a hand. So the neighbor farmer hooked up his tractor to the semi with half the house on it up our little hill. It was raining that morning, so it was a little slippery. So that's, that's the extent of the video. Um, there's more to it, but I won't uh, keep it going because we have other things to talk about. But just like the tractor, that little tractor, powerful and mighty four-wheel drive John Deere, the neighbor suggested he brought his tractor over. The Holy Spirit is kind of like that for us, right? It is strong and mighty. And when we are having challenges, we can't get up those hills in our life. The Holy Spirit puts his line out to us and says, I will pull you along. I will give you what you need. I will help you get to your destination. The Holy Spirit is about helping us. And of course, we, sometimes we come to God and we say, God, this is really hard. We're really challenged. The job is hard. I'm so busy. I can't get it all done. Lord, I'm feeling pain. I have illness. And God answers our prayers and gives us strength. But the Holy Spirit is more than that, right? He helps us in our situations, but he also wants us to change. The new members, I spoke with each one of them, 10 of them, individually after the classes were over. We talked about faith, personal faith, and um, scripture and so on. And one of the um, new members said this, I come to church to be a better person. And I thought, wow, that is, that is deep. And then I came to think of it a little bit more and thought, yeah, it's important that we do the right thing, that we behave in the right way, and so on. But even more than that, God wants our hearts to change according to his will because he loves us more deeply than you will ever know. And we know that through what Jesus did on the cross, took all the injustice and the evil to the grave, even death, and then rose from the dra grave and then won the victory. And then we have the Holy Spirit in that knowledge of what Christ has done, giving us his peace and reminding us of what Jesus did and strengthening us, but wants us to be formed according to God's will, which is love, right? It's forgiveness. It's joy. It's power. And the power is through the power of love. We are called to be convicted by the Spirit. Every Sunday, we have a prayer of adoration and confession, right? 
And we need to practice this as we know that we are tempted in this world. We run after stuff for ourselves. <sighs> it's all about you, people have told us. <laughs> I think we've all been recipients of that criticism, right? And as we come to church, we confess our sins and we allow God's Spirit then to change us. And basically, to be changed according to, be, to God's will, to be a better person, it is what, it's a path to downward mobility, actually, towards humility, to know that we are not sufficient on our own, that through God and His Spirit, He gave us life, we didn't give ourselves life. Through His Spirit, we will be raised up and be more the people He called us to be and the joy will undergird all the other stuff that could be happening in the world and the suffering we could be experiencing. That's what Jesus calls us to do, to be changed, to be a person more in line with God's will. So we come to God in prayer. And as we come to God in prayer, the Spirit works through us, convicting us. You shouldn't be doing that. You know, when you do that, you hurt so-and-so. And the Spirit does that. Oh, I hate that when somebody tells me that I'm doing something wrong, right? We don't like that. But the Spirit does it for our own good so we can grow and be formed more according to God's will. And it makes us free from ourselves. It's a freedom that's bigger than freedom of my own rights and privileges, right? It goes for freedom for all, that our actions build up our families and build up the world. And then we are created through the Spirit to have that desire to do that. Holy Spirit, if you look at that word, I was reading a hymn this week, and in that hymn, it talked about the work of the Holy Spirit. Dwell in me, O Spirit. And if you look at the H in holy, that means the Spirit brings us to wholeness. Accepting God's love. The T at the end of Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Whereas there's so much confusion in the world and uncertainty, and which way should we go? The Spirit gives us the long view, the Spirit of truth, so we can see beyond the issues and see that there is a God helping us through it. And then when we know that, we can lean into the challenges, the problems, the injustices, and we can do something about it because God is with us through His Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit gives us truth. And if you look at the L in holy, it's about love, right? Unconditional love. The Spirit convicts us of our sin, but whatever we do, we are always loved. And we know that because we are loved, we are in a safe place where we can change and be more the person God wants us to be because he lifts us up and we're in line with his will. Jesus, the other um, symbol for L would be Jesus is Lord. Is Jesus Lord of your life or is your status in life, your wealth, your performance? Whatever you do in life, is that your identity? Are you Lord of yourself or is Jesus Lord where you want to follow God's way that brings, unites people together, as we saw at Pentecost, and springs us forward for his kingdom. Power. When we're in a situation where we need to bring healing, we're sometimes scared. But with the Holy Spirit, and we're allowing the Spirit to change us, we can be courageous, and we can say a word that needs to be said when something's not going right, and we can work towards healing. 
The, beauty, the Spirit is beautiful. It provides all these things and gives us peace as well. The Spirit gives us peace when we're feeling like things are not going well. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. And another one for P would be pray. And to pray to the Lord and then allow the gate of the Holy Spirit to come into your life. And joy, there's no J in Holy Spirit, but I'm using the Y there as a J, because in Dutch, the Y is kind of like a J. <laughs> Peter, is that kind of right? Or <laughs> and joy undergirds it all. And it's a joy more than the world where things go your way. I mean, of course, you feel light in your step when, you know, things go well. But it's a joy that is deeper than just stuff that happens to us. It's a joy that comes from our heart as the Spirit convicts us to be open to that joy. So this week, actually two days ago, I was uh, starting the barbecue. Jackie and I were putting supper together. Jackie was, uh, had more of the plans than I did, but she said, let's um, have some uh, salmon. So I got the barbecue going, and we wrapped the salmon in foil paper, and I sat in the chair beside the barbecue, kind of looking at the yard and just kind of relaxing. And then a gust of wind came up, and my umbrella rose off the table and it didn't just like fall over it rose and went right over the roof and i'm wondering if my neighbor was looking out the window what he would have saw it wasn't it was breezy but it wasn't that windy so i got the umbrella put it back in its stand at this time i put the little screw to hold it in But it just reminded me of the Spirit because I too, I have a schedule, I get busy and I, my life is so important in what I do that I forget that I can rest in the Spirit. And the Spirit can invigorate me with His power. And the new members have said as they become new members, I want to be in this church because I believe the Spirit is alive. And we are welcoming the Spirit here. Amen? Amen? And we can do great things. We don't need to be afraid. Thanks be to God for His Word, for His Spirit today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And shall we respond as we sing together filled with the Spirit's power.
We present our tithes and offerings as an act of worship in response to the spoken word. We present the offerings given this morning as well as those given on a weekly or monthly basis directly to the office. Let us pray. Spirit of grace and power, bless the gifts we offer today so that they may accomplish surprising things in Jesus' name. Equip each of us and all of us together to proclaim the good news with grace and power in ways we have not yet dreamed possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, everyone. And I, just... Hmm. I just want to mention that uh, there's, there's three elders. I'm just looking at them right now. Nora, Donald, Dean, and Margaret. And you are all past elders. I mean, you are elders for life, but I just want to affirm your leadership as well in the church. So God bless you in your continued ministry. As you're ordained, you're always ordained and called by God. Amen. Shall we come to our God in prayer? Wind of the Spirit, blow through us on this day of Pentecost and renew our faith, reawaken our love for God, and strengthen our fellowship after the challenges of the pandemic. Let your flames warm our hearts and trust in Jesus Christ and hope for the future he will create. Dare us to do great things in his name. Wind of the Spirit, enliven us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, Lord, blow through us and renew our energy to serve you in Christ's church. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission in changing times. Open our hearts to welcome newcomers and meet those we don't yet know. Open our hands, God, to share in the tasks that need doing and open our lips in prayer and praise. Wind of the Spirit, enliven us and renew our energy. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us new understanding for those whose lives seem so different from ours and for those facing situations we've never encountered for those with whom we've disagreed, and for those whose values challenge our expectations. God, for problems and challenges we face at home or at work, and for the complex issues we face in your world, Lord, hear our prayer. Wind of the Spirit, enliven us and give us new understanding. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring us healing and peace. Lord, we pray for those who are ill, who are at home or in hospital. Lord, we pray that you give them what they need and give them the healing, Lord, that they need at this time. Let your spirit be with them so they feel your presence. They know your presence, God. You are the great healer, and we thank you. We lift before you Joyce McFarlane, Lori James' mother, who is uh, in the hospital, Lord. We just um, pray for the healing she needs at this time. Be with Lori and her family. Strengthen them. And let their hope continue to rest on you at this time. Lord, we pray for all those who face pain, illness, discouragement, or disappointment. Bring healing for all who know sorrow, sadness, or grief. Bring healing for those who face stress and pressure. Bring healing for places in the world facing conflict and for the creation struggling for life itself. Wind of the Spirit, enliven us and bring healing and peace. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring us the wisdom and compassion we see in Christ Jesus. Blow through us and equip us to serve the world you love in his name. Lord, we thank you that you give us reminders of the Spirit where we see gusts and things happening and we're reminded, Lord, that you are with us and we are to listen to your word and to your Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for the General Assembly who will be meeting this week. We pray for Gladys, our, one of our elders who is attending online for the online assembly. Give Gladys and all the commissioners what they need in terms of wisdom as they debate and they make decisions. 
Blow through our whole church and refresh us as your faithful people. As together we say the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And shall we respond with our closing hymn, Revive Your Work, O Lord, 284 in our book of praise. Please remain standing. Lift up your hearts to God. Receive his blessing and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion, the guidance, the power, the love of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Amen.